this is, this is, this is. Welcome back to it. It's a brand new episode of the Mike Herrera Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Herrera. Episode 510, May 20th. The year is flying by, 2024. Um, we're heading into summer. MXPX has some shows coming up in Bremerton. Before we get there, though, Goldfinger. I'm going to be playing with Goldfinger in Denver, Colorado. Uh, that's uh, June 14th, 15th, somewhere in there. It's the, the Ska Fest, so it's... Goldfinger, Less Than Jake, Five Iron Frenzy, Planet Smashers, Potato Pirates, a bunch of bands. It's going to be great. So um, that's in Denver. And then, then MXPX, a couple weeks later, hometown shows, MXPX in Bremerton, Washington, two nights at the Arsenal Theater, sold out. Thank you so much for buying those tickets. It means so much to us. It means the world to us that people want to see us play in Bremerton in our hometown. So uh, we're working on those set lists. It's going to be so much fun. Once we kick off those two nights, we aren't done. We actually have to go to Portland with no effects for their last weekend in Portland. So we'll be in Portland, Oregon, June 30th, June 30th. So the 28th, 29th in Bremerton, then June 30th. MXPeaks.com for all the information. Uh, sold out Bremerton shows. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Um, I'm sure there's a few people reselling tickets. You know, their plans changed. They couldn't make it or whatever. Uh, plenty of time to, to make that happen, but um, we'll be doing those shows, no effects, and then we're back in Denver with no effects, June, no, July 20th, July 20th, and then the end of summer, after summer's done, we'll be, we'll be in Los Angeles in San Pedro, California with no effects for their very last weekend of being a band, period. So those are the shows we got coming up. We are working on more uh, dates, so... Thank you for your patience. We love you so much. Appreciate you. Um, thanks for listening to the podcast. Most people listening to this podcast are fans of MXPX, but you don't have to be to listen to this podcast. You can just be a fan of me, I guess. I don't know. Maybe you even hate me and you just like the way I talk. I don't know what it is, but I appreciate you listening. Thank you for subscribing. If you've already subscribed, go up to your Spotify or Apple Music, whatever you're listening on, and just click that uh, like that heart, whatever it is that, that tells them that you want to see more of these episodes. That would help me out a lot, help us all out a lot. Me, Bob McKnight. Shout out to Bob McKnight, the producer. What's up? Uh, if you want to call in, call in. The number is 360-830-6660. Leave me a voicemail. It doesn't have to be about anything in particular. You could just be shooting the breeze. I don't care. Call in. All right. MXPeaks.com. Appreciate you guys. We got a bunch of new merch either up right now or coming. I'm not exactly sure when it's all coming out, but you know, we're we're always working on something. So thank you for your support on that. All right, let's get to it. Let's get to some voicemails. Hey Mike, it's Jill from Pennsylvania. I'm just calling in to say hi and hope you're doing well. I don't really have any questions. This is kind of just a good outlet for me because I can't really uh seek my mind other places so at least this feels like i get to do a little bit of that um yeah i hope you're doing well and i don't know it's been a slow week so i'm hoping things pick up for everyone soon and i'm not so bored because i'm bored right now so thanks for being you all right i'll talk to you later bye thanks for calling jill i was gonna say last week i was gonna say we need some more Ladies to call in, and you called in anyway, although this is probably from weeks ago. But um, I hope you're not having a slow week this week. I hope it's all right. I hope you're feeling good. Thanks for calling. Um, yeah, you can call in anytime. It doesn't have to be for any particular reason, and especially if you can't speak your mind in other places. Maybe your work is really stringent about you know not speaking out, not doing any. I don't know. Maybe at home you just feel like you can't, uh, you have to be holding it together, which, you know, moms do have to hold it together quite a lot. I get that. So, yeah, use me, use this podcast, use this community as a place to just spill it. Like, I want, I, I need to start interviewing you guys and, and see what does a slow week look like to Jill in Philadelphia? Um, I'm sure it's crazy. I'm sure you're, you're doing plenty. Um, for me, when I get bored, it's a great thing. I'm almost never bored. Although sometimes I feel I feel like I don't have the energy to do something that I want to do. I'm always wanting to do things, but I'm like, I don't know if I have the energy to do that. Do you ever feel that way? 
yeah, that's that's me sometimes. But I feel like honestly, shake it off, get out there, do it. I'm always I always feel better about whatever it is. Um, it could even be this podcast. Like, oh, I got to do the podcast. Not that I'm like, oh, I got to do the podcast, but it is a thing that I need to do, and I have to like sit down and focus and do it. So in that regard, sometimes you don't feel like so focused. You don't want to sit down and really just work on something. Uh, what do I do? I guess it just depends on how bad I am, how bad off I am. But usually I'll just force myself. I'll just be like, all right, pull it together, Mike. Let's do this. Um, I don't actually call myself Mike in my head or anything, never. But I just did it for you guys. Um, felt like it help the story a little bit. Uh, but I just, I just push myself and I just take a deep breath and, and go for it. And, and I think that goes along with anything that, that we put off. Um, usually I'll psych myself up to do like videos or, um, anything that takes a setup, a big setup. I've got to set up all that stuff and yeah, I'll psych myself up to do that because, it's not easy. Life is not easy, you guys. Life is not easy. It's also not that hard. I mean, the day-to-day -day part isn't that hard. I mean, getting up, brush your teeth, take a shower, what you know, that kind of thing. It can get tiring though. So it's not hard, but it can get tiring like, oh, I got to do this again. Like showering is not something that I feel like is a burden. Like I enjoy a shower. It's nice. But it's these day-to-day -day things that you just got to, you got to do day in, day out. Like for me, mowing the lawn, I mow the lawn the next week, got to mow it again. Like it, it's enough to drive somebody crazy, right? Like that's, but then you just have to take that deep breath and go, you know what? That's part of the joy of this life is having a lawn is my privilege. I, I, I'm grateful to have a lawn to mow and have a mower to mow the lawn. So all these things go into my head and then, then you just have to find your gratitude and find your energy and just buck it up and let's go. So that's, that's, that's every day, you know, honestly, it's every day, unless I'm so busy, 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 busy. But anytime the thoughts start creeping in boredom, as you might say, I, I don't really call it boredom anymore. I just call it, I call it a lack of focus in a lot of ways for me personally, it could be boredom for you. Uh, but for me, it's usually a lack of focus. And um, because I'm always just working on some something creative, something I'm building, something I'm uh, writing or, or bringing into the world. Um, and I don't know, always know how it's gonna go. I was working on a video last night, just a, kind of a documentary style video of what I've been doing on, on this project. And um, I had an idea and I like undid a bunch of stuff thinking I could redo it, redo a bunch of stuff. And I undid all the work I had just done and found that I couldn't redo it. I was working on my phone. I was just using a little editing app on my phone called Focus Live. Really like that app. Um, but it's a video editing app and it's more like, it's not like one of those fancy apps where you just put in all the videos and it does everything for you. It's like it's like an editor that you would have on your your desktop computer. Put the video in, clip that, clip that, clip that put it in place, you know, you can add sounds and things like that. You can add tech, you can do all the things you could do on a, on a, on a desktop computer, but it's on your phone. It's cool. I, I enjoy it. So it kind of looks, let me show you. Uh, here's, here's what it looks like. Here's a little clip of, of linoleum. You guys have probably already seen. So, but that's what the, that's what the editor looks like. And then you can, you can like add stuff or whatever. But um, anyway, I was working on that and I lost pretty much all of the good work I had done. Like I was starting from scratch again after, I don't know, a good 45 minutes of just sitting there on my phone. And I was really liking what I had too. And then once I did that bonehead move, I was just like, okay, I'm done. I'm not. I'm not working on this. I might not ever do this video. And if I do, I'm starting over from scratch and I'm just gonna do it on my desktop because on your desktop, usually things don't happen like that where you just totally screw yourself. But 
hey, these things happen in all walks of life, don't they? A lot of different forms. But, hey, I just put it away, didn't come back to it, I lost. You know, the phone won, I lost. That's it. All right, let's go to the the next voicemail. Hey, Mike. Uh, my name is Johnny, uh, Johnny Buffer. Um, anyways, it's uh, cool listening to your podcast. Uh, I grew up listening to you guys. I was really young, and my neighbor gave me a cassette tape, and that cassette tape was the On the Cover album, and I listened to that. That was the first time I ever heard punk rock. Good time. But we're heading out to Denver from Missouri uh, to see you guys. Um and I think that's on April 5th. Um, but anyways, yeah, we're, uh, we're flying out there to see you guys, uh, me and my family. Um, and I saw you guys three days before I, uh, went to Afghanistan, uh, um, a long time ago. Um, uh, and that was the last time I seen you guys. Um, but yeah, we're all looking forward to seeing you guys play. Uh, the new album sounds pretty rad. And, uh, yeah, just looking forward to seeing you guys. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you later. Thanks for the call, Johnny. So cool. Thanks for coming out to Denver. I hope you had a blast. Um, I wish you would have talked more about Afghanistan, honestly. Like, I want to hear the story of where did you see us play before you, saw, you, you got shipped to Afghanistan? How old were you? What was the situation? Um, what year was it? Was it... I think Afghanistan would have been, well, at least, you know, a good 15 years ago, maybe. I guess it could have been less because we just got out of Afghanistan, what, three years ago, two years, two or three years ago. Um, fascinating. You know, it, it, it is interesting where we end up in our lives at the same time as when we discover a band or you know, when we go see a band live and then something happens in our lives that's a big thing. Uh, it's it's something that's really interesting to me because, uh, honestly, I'm convinced that people like us more when big things happen in their lives while they're listening to MXPX. You know, it just molds it molds the music to the, the soundtrack of their life. And... Um, you know, I hope I hope we've done that a little bit with you, Johnny. Um, I'm glad you came back from Afghanistan. That's uh, it's got to be a crazy place to be. I've never been. Um, I don't think I would like to go. <laughs> I don't like that heat. Uh, all that heat. No, thank you. Uh, but thank you for your service. Thanks for braving the desert for us. And and I'm sure it was just an insane experience. So I uh, wish you would have. I wish I could ask you about it. It's the, the problem with voicemails is I can't ask follow-up questions. But thanks for your call, and thanks for bringing the family out to Denver. That show was so much fun. We had a blast. MXPX, the, uh, the Ataris, Fire and Frenzy, it was uh, so much fun at the Ogden. All right, let's get to the next voicemail. Hey, what's up, Mike? This is Thomas of, uh, from Memory. I have my own YouTube channel, and uh, I was listening to your podcast. I'm still going to finish listening to it. Um, my main thing is, I can't wait to see you guys play with uh, Blink-182. Um, if y'all play with Slick Shoes again, that would be amazing. But uh, I've been following all your videos on YouTube, and I would love to see you guys play with this band. This, Blink is, like, blowing up huge right now. Like, they're, like, the biggest thing, and it seems like, in as far as punk rock. Uh, next to you guys, obviously, because you guys are huge as well. But um, on your finger-picking, um, I just want to let you know that I've been doing it for a few years now, and I, I actually self-taught myself. And I have a few YouTube videos where I've integrated the pick with finger picking in my songs to create uh, dynamic breakdowns where the, I've noticed that they go, the pick is, you know, it's just right in your face, you know, hitting those notes. But then you, when you go from the pick to a finger pick, which on my style, I um, will pluck the, the bass note and the very high, uh, high note at the same time. Uh, and then you hit notes in between to create this kind of uh, almost a euphoric dynamic ambient feel, uh, more atmospheric in the music. So I have like 10 new songs coming out this year to my channel. And I just honestly 
I want to thank you personally because you're a huge influence to this album. And I had to literally, I'm singing my songs for the first time using my voice, uh, just raw, open voice. And my first few songs sounded like you. And my kids were like, hey, you sound like that one guy that, you know, has like the mohawk and is it makes CX. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And so I had to really like find my own. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for the inspiration uh, on this new album that I'm, I'm working on. It's a lot of, uh, it's new sound of music. Uh, it has a lot of finger picking and um, a lot of just different chord changes, but it's definitely uh, inspired by punk rock and inspired by uh, MXTX uh, and bands like like you guys. Um, but anyways, hey man, you hope you have a great day and uh, keep doing all the great work. I share all your stuff. Uh, you guys are awesome, and I uh, can't wait to see you guys again. And yeah, man, if you guys ever do a show with uh, Blink One of These Two. Um, it's obviously going to be a massive show for y'all, but yeah, it's sad to see no FX go, but, uh, I'm glad you guys are still here. All right, man. You take care. Rad. Thanks, Thomas. That was a great call. Um, so I think, you know, I think, uh, I think maybe we'd play with Blink 182 again. Uh, I'll say one thing. Blink is a little bit bigger than us at this point. Um, they always were a little bit bigger than us. They always kind of just were a, a bit bigger, and then we were just right under there. But they're they're pretty far ahead of us at this point. They they sell out uh, arenas around the world. But yeah, love Blink One Eighty Two. Love those guys, and we'd love to play with them in the future. You know, it, it could happen. It might happen. Slick shoes that could happen too. You never know. We'll see if those guys are around. I know they're I know they're probably working on some new stuff soon here. But um, you were talking about finger picking, and I think I mentioned that a while back on the on the podcast, and I haven't really updated anybody about it, so might as well update. Um, finger picking on guitar, talking about finger picking, not bass finger picking, which is a totally different subject, which we can get into another time. But I started teaching myself how to do finger picking patterns, and I've done I've done patterns in the past that aren't what I kind of like retaught myself this time just using like like I was saying before videos like looking at people looking up YouTube videos watching people play but um yeah there's a song where I use flat pick and my fingers in the song like you were talking about Thomas and um I don't do it a lot but I do it on this song it just kind of seems to work and and I didn't write it that way. I just, in performing it, I started doing that. So I don't know if you even think it's recorded like that. But the song I'm talking about is a tumble down song, and it's called Son of a Gun. It's, uh, I don't remember, I think it's on our first album, um, the self titled tumble down album, Son of a Gun. And it's, it's real, it's, it's a ballad, and it's like, I'm playing with my fingers, I'm plucking with my fingers for the verses. And then on the chorus, it's a little louder, and so I use my my flat pick, and I do so. I uh, I know exactly what you mean, and and uh, man, I hope the record goes well. I hope you uh, hope you're happy. It sounds like you're happy with it. I hope um, hope everybody gets to hear it. Make sure you submit to Music Monday when it comes out, so we all, all want to hear it. Give us a YouTube link on Music Monday on the Facebook group. Uh, it's the Mike Herrera Podcast Facebook group. All right. Thanks, Thomas. All right, let's get to let's get to another one. Hey Mike, it's Jay uh from New York. It was so great to see you down in Atlanta. Um just wanted to share the rest of my story that I shared with you at the, the concert regarding how Part of my uh, earplug broke off in my left ear back when I saw you guys in uh, New York City. So, yeah, it was a little uh, a little uh, unnerving. When I got home, my wife ended up using one of those earwax scoopers to take it out, and thankfully since then, uh, no issues since. So it was really great seeing you in concert. Definitely totally loving the new album. Um, just had a question, though, with one of the songs that you had, Mountains to Climb. Totally loving the uh, chorus about how you throw in all these na uh, references to nature about lightning, about um, when you, and diving into the water. Um, 
just wondering if uh, your what your inspiration was on that, if it had anything to do with the Pacific Northwest. Uh, also, just wondering, too, if you're uh, a hiker um, at, uh, with the references to uh, the mountain. Uh, again, totally loving the new album. Um, just to let you know, I play it every uh, time I'm going home from the office. Uh, for me, it's kind of like a pick-me-up at, at the end of my work day uh, and to help me carry me through the rest of uh, my day uh, heading home. So keep up the great work, man, and uh, hopefully we'll meet soon. Uh, all right, peace out. Take care. Dude, what's up, Jay? Thanks for uh, thanks for calling in and giving me the end of that story. Um, I remember you coming up and telling me about it. I was horrified. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, yeah. It, it, I've had plenty of ear things stuck in my ears. Yuri just had one in practice the other day, and I had to pull it out with the needle nose pliers. So needle nose pliers is what we usually use because we're using what we get stuck in our ears aren't earplugs. They're actually triple flange ear tips tips meaning tips for the the headphone sound and 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 that sticks on the end of the 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 end of the headphone thing mechanism i don't know and then that goes in your ear and then sometimes after a while those things wear out and then they start falling off and you're just like oh, no it's in there i can't hear anything so we've all we've all uh been there and experienced that nightmare glad it worked out for you kudos to your wife awesome um, earwax scooper though. Whoa, be careful with that. Um, mountains to climb. Yeah. That's one of our, we, we really like that song as a band. We always play that in practice when we're, even if we're not like planning on doing it at a show, it's just a fun one. It's very much to me. It reminds me of something that might be on life in general. It's just, da, da, it, it sounds like, uh, the wonder years or something, you know, it's very straightforward, but it's got these like these jerky rhythms and, and, um, but as far as, am I a hiker? <sighs> yes. Unfortunately, yes, I am a hiker. I wouldn't call myself a hiker. I wouldn't say I'm a hiker, but I do hike sometimes. I would say Tom is more of a hiker than I am, Thomas Nesky. But um, maybe he inspired me because he was, he was uh, posting so many shots of him, like on the top of this mountain, this mountain. And I can't really remember at the time being inspired by Tom, but now that I'm really thinking about it, maybe he did. Maybe he was what inspired me to, to write that chorus about nature. And um, I don't know what it is. Usually something triggers me uh, when it comes to a chorus, like you've got mountains to climb, got lightning to ride. When you see water, you die, you know, like, uh, yeah, I mean, I think you're kind of on, I think you're, you're not too far off. I live in the Pacific Northwest. It's beautiful out here during the summers. There's mountains you can climb. There's bears. Watch out for those bears. My, my wife actually saw a bear while hiking, and it took her quite a while to go back in that same spot. Um, and somebody died in that same spot we go here in Bremerton. Um, it's not too far from where my parents live on Chico. But um, somebody, I think was down in the river and in a big uh, branch fell on this lady and just took her out. I know it's a little morbid, but um, you know, you're not expecting that kind of thing when you're just out enjoying nature, enjoying a hike. But yes, uh, I do hike now and again. I haven't hiked for a while, but summer's coming. You never know. It might happen. Um, but don't, don't look too far into these lyrics. You know, whenever I have a, a, an, I, an idea that's like this, it's usually just, it's just like, oh, that would be an interesting, that's a cool idea. You know, just you've got mountains to climb. And we've all got mountains to climb, whether they're actual real mountains or they're just a metaphor for all the struggles in our lives. So, all right. Thanks, Jay. Uh, always one of my favorite people to see. Love you seeing you out there on the road. Always come say hi when you see me. All right. Hey, Mike. Uh, this is Frank from Florida. Uh, my 14-year-old daughter and I, we just saw your show in Orlando. Absolutely fantastic. She had a, just such a memorable night, and we were able to meet you guys at the merch table uh, after the show. Again, just an absolute great experience. Definitely a great father and daughter 
moment. Uh, I had a couple quick questions for you. One was, uh, will the uh, Renaissance EP and or the Broken Bones EP ever see a reissue? Because I absolutely love those. Some of my favorite tracks are on there. Um, and then also uh, a track from Let It Happen, which is one of my favorites called First Class Mail. I was wondering if you guys have ever played that live. I always try to search for um, uh, YouTube clips of it, and I can't find it. In the 90s, I even have some old VHSs of the guys' performances, and I didn't see it there. So I'm just wondering if you could recall if you've ever played that song and your thoughts on that song as well. Thanks again, Mike. Uh, hope all is well, and uh, appreciate everything. Okay, bye. Cool. All right, I'll answer it. Um, Frank, thanks for the call. Uh, thanks for coming out to the Florida meet and greet. Orlando was so much fun. We had a great time. Um, vinyl, repress, broken bones, Renaissance EP. Is it possible? Will that ever happen? I mean, anything's possible. Anything's possible. I don't think it's happening anytime soon because we're kind of, we're still really focused on making new things. And now and again, we will repress, we repressed life in general, slowly going the way of the Buffalo and the ever passing moment uh, a couple years ago. I think it's a couple years ago now. Uh, maybe that was actually just last year, early last year before the album. Yeah, it was just last year. Wild. Anyway, I could be wrong. Maybe it was 2022. It's not important. What's important is, yes, we repress those, and they're in the store right now at mxpx.com. People can buy them. They stumble upon them. They don't. Some people don't even realize that they exist, and they can get it. So we just we always try to have staple albums available for everyone at mxpx.com. Um, now, Renaissance EP, Broken Bones EP, we don't have the rights to those. Um, we'd have to do a new deal. So legally, it's not something we could just do tomorrow. It would take quite a bit of work, um, but it is possible. And and if we do it, it's going to be far in the future. <laughs> I'll just, I'll tell you that. Uh, I'm pretty sure. But uh, we have nothing, nothing against those, those releases. We love, love a lot of the songs on those songs. We like Broken Bones. It's one of our biggest, it's, it is our biggest song in Japan. But it's, uh, it's one of our biggest songs just in Southeast Asia in general. Um, Renaissance EP, there's some great songs. Lonesome Towns on that song on that EP. Um, uh, Don't Look Back. Yeah, there's just some good songs on there. But um, not sure when we'll ever get around to repressing. You asked if we ever played First Class Mail. That is a song. What was that on? Was that on renaissance ep or was that earlier was that on the punk rock show seven inch i don't remember um back in the day early days mxpx played first class mail live many times but back in those days we didn't have video footage ever of anything we didn't have photos of mostly anything um i don't know i honestly i just i didn't have the forethought to really think oh we need to film all of our shows we need to film all the things that we do i, I was not a genius in that way <laughs> didn't have that forethought but uh we did play it uh, a couple years ago when we were doing our between this world and the next live on the internet shows i want to say we played first class mail so look it up on our youtube Look up First Class Mail. I, I don't know that we actually ever released a single up on YouTube when we were releasing those live versions of songs, but um, a Google search or maybe somebody can, can write in and call in or something and, and tell, tell me, but I'm pretty sure we did First Class Mail recently. Um, will we do it again ever? Sure, maybe. It could happen. I kind of like that song. It's fun. <laughs> All right, let's hear the next one. Yo, Mike, what's up, dude? It's Chad with Offbeat. I just want to jump on and say, for one, thanks for bringing me on your podcast. And I had a couple questions, but fucking got caught in the moment and forgot to ask you. Um, so does religion play uh, a role in any of your writing or even in your life anymore? That'd be question number one. And then question number two I had for you is, uh, are you into any extreme metal? Are you pretty much a, a punk guy? But uh, that's all I got, man. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Later, dude. Thanks for calling. 
Funny, funny. Um, good questions. Good questions. Uh, religion. I, I don't know. I mean, I think my past, you know, I grew up going to church. I grew up going to youth group and, um, you know, I went to kind of a Baptist style church that was fairly modern, you know, and then, and then later in, you know, I went to a different church for a while and it was, it was pretty, pretty basic, you know, very simple, nothing crazy. Um, I think all of the, my life influences how I write. So I'm going to say, yes, I, it does affect my writing. Uh, I'm still very open to possibilities and possibilities that I haven't even thought of yet. And um, I, I'm constantly blown away when I learn something new about the world, when I learn something new even about somebody that I've known for a long time, a friend, uh, somebody I love. I'm constantly finding out new things. Like, I don't know everything there is to know about my parents, surely. Um, they keep a lot from me, and I got to, like, ask questions, or they're never going to say anything. So, so yeah, I think it all, it all sort of mixes together, and it all affects what comes out. And that's, that's good influences, bad influences, uh, time-wasting influences, whatever it may be, it all really has an effect on us. I, I really believe that. Um, now, extreme metal. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what extreme means with metal, but I definitely like some metal bands. I like some hardcore. I grew up listening to, you know, Metallica. Plenty of Metallica back in the day. Um, most people start with Metallica, right? But I also got into kind of like. I would almost say like hair metal. I was really a, a big fan of of Poison, Motley Crue, those kind of big hair metal bands, um, and hardcore. So Gorilla Biscuits, um, you know, uh, there was a few other hardcore bands I really liked, but it was mostly just punk rock most of my days. Punk rock, punk rock, punk rock over and over and over. And I would say probably my one of my favorite heavy bands would have to be Hatebreed. I mean, they're really fun. They have positive lyrics. They're heavy as F. I mean, there's there's so many heavy bands out there. It it kind of blows me away that are that are huge, really huge. The metal has gotten so big over the last decade, maybe even two decades. But it really has gotten big. Where punk, eh, punk's gotten big. But I feel like there's less big punk bands. Green Day, Blink-182, The Offspring, No Effects. I mean, the kind of the biggest bands, and even those bands aren't that big. Like, The Offspring and No Effects are pretty big, but they're not that, I mean, we're on our way to being as big as that. So... I don't know. It's just a matter of when you stop growing and, and sometimes you can stop growing and then start growing again, which is really hard to do, but that's something that MXPX has done over the years. Um, fun question. Honestly, I, I know that I know a ton of metal bands. I just can't think of them. I, you know, I have to start looking it up and start looking at my, uh, my music library, but, um, I do enjoy metal. I enjoy a lot of heavy stuff. Um, but yeah, I, my main focus is, is punk rock. Chad, thanks for the call. All right, let's get to one more. Hey, Mike, this is Cyrus. Um, admittedly, I've lost track of how many times I have uh, called into this show by now. Um, but I just want to say I, uh, I saw you guys play at uh, the Orlando show. And I, I just got to tell you, that was one of the most like fun I've ever had at any concert. Um <laughs> Uh, Tuesday told me and my girlfriend, who both went, were kind of um, were pretty tired because we had just saw um, Fall Out Boy play with Jimmy at World the night before, two bands that we both love. So seeing two concerts back to back, where we were both just screaming our lungs out. Uh, you can imagine our voices were pretty gone after that, but hey, still a fun time. I wouldn't change anything. Um, so uh, I do have kind of a question for you guys. Uh, I noticed this in the set list for the Orlando show that some songs were, like, kind of a bit different compared to, like, the show I like, Atlanta you guys played in that before or, like, some other shows. Um, 
you know, I kind of kept track of the set list you guys were playing before to kind of, like, prepare myself to kind of, like, um, know, like, what songs are going to be played, you know, for me and my girlfriend just kind of get, like, you know, familiar with the songs. Um, not that we went before, but kind of just, like, the structure and what songs you guys were playing, stuff like that. So, um, I noticed some songs are different. Like, we, like, we got songs like, uh, Everything Sucks, um, and Aces Up, which I don't believe are played on some of the shows on this tour. So I'm kind of wondering just, like, what songs, like, how, like, how do you guys choose what songs go into a set list, like, for a certain night? Like, do you, um, is there any, like, you know, um, like, is there just any way of deciding, like, what you're going to play for one night or, like, what you're going to cut from the next or, like, just anything like that? Uh, I'm just kind of curious. And, of course, you have, like, the, the new album, Find a Way Home. You gotta, um, you're playing all those, all, all the great tracks of those songs, uh, the, uh, that album, sorry. Uh, that was really fun to hear um, and sing along to. Um, but, yeah, like, just kind of, how do you guys decide, like, what songs to play for a certain show? So, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. Um, again, love the concert. And also, uh, thanks for, you know, having that, you know, meet and greet right after. Um, I know it was really late and especially doing it for free. That's like just one of the coolest things ever. Um, you know, we got to meet you. So thanks for signing my before everything and after CD. And you guys all also signed, uh, the, the half drumstick that my girlfriend got from Yuri. Uh, which is kind of a funny story. Um, but yeah, just really cool. So thank you guys so much for that. Um, awesome show. And, uh, yeah, um, can't wait to see what the future holds. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Cyrus. Man, you know, I remember seeing that uh, Fall Out Boy was in Orlando the night before, or they were somewhere close to us the night before um, the Orlando show. So you went to that. That's cool. I went to the, see them in Seattle. I saw them in Jamie Eat World. Great show. Great set. Um, enjoyed it. And I'm not even a huge fan of Fall Out Boy. I don't know a lot of their songs, but I just, I you know, them being from our genre and peers, I wanted to see what, you know, another arena punk band was going to sound like. So I didn't mention them before when I was talking about Green Day, Blink-182, The Offspring, No Effects, Rancid maybe. Uh, but yeah, Fall Out Boy is another uh, another one of those bands that have really broken out into the mainstream. And I'm proud of them for doing that. Good job, guys. All right. Um, you wanted to know, how do we pick our songs? Because we didn't pay, play the same set the night before in Atlanta as we did in Orlando. And, and, you know, we really try to switch it up. That's just our main goal is to just have a little bit of variety throughout the shows and throughout the tours. So it, we're not just doing the same thing over and over and over. You're always getting something a little different. Now, how do we choose which songs? I, it, honestly, like, what did we play last night? Let's play something different. That's how we choose. And how we choose what is we have some alternates that work well in place of, like, say in place of Aces Up, we might play another song that's fast like that. Excuse me. Uh, like a, a Secret Weapon or something like that could fit well in place of of Aces Up. Um, but that's kind of how we do it, is, is just picking a song that's similar to replace the song that is being replaced. Because you want to have a flow to your set that makes sense. You don't want it to be all fast songs and then all slow songs. Or you don't want it to be all slow songs and then all fast songs. You, you want to have a mix and you want to have a flow and sort of like a, a wave that you can ride. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I mean, you said you enjoyed it, so <laughs> I appreciate the call. And uh, I hope to get down south again and, and see you guys again. And we'll play an even more different set. All right. That's it. Thank you guys so much for your questions. Please call in, leave a voicemail. The number is 360-830-6660. Shout out to Bob McKnight, producer Bob, for making this thing go and, and keeping me uh, keeping me working. You know, he'll if I haven't sent him a podcast, he'll like hit me up and be like, hey, you doing a podcast this week? Yes, I'm doing a podcast this week, but thanks for the reminder, Bob. I appreciate you. Um, everybody, check out. A couple weeks ago, we did a Music Monday. Last week was a, a good episode called uh, Let's Beef. Just great questions you guys have been calling in with, and uh, I've been having fun with it. So please don't hesitate. Don't be shy. Get on the voicemail. Leave me a message. Get on the podcast, all right? All right, until next time, make sure you follow My Career Podcast on Instagram, My Career Pod on Twitter, uh, My Career Podcast on the Facebook group. All those three places. Uh, you can get me on uh, 
TikTok. It's just Mike Herrera TD. It's all, all my personals are Mike Herrera TD. And I don't have a, a podcast TikTok, so just I just use my personal pretty much just to do that. And if you like watching the podcast, you can watch on my YouTube channel, my career video. All right. Until next week, y'all. Peace.